in this video, you're gonna learn seven symptoms you should never ignore. My name is Dr. Story. I've been a chiropractor for over 23 years. I'm gonna give you realistic advice based on my experience. I'm gonna give you seven symptoms that you should never, ever ignore. Now, these are not uh, the seven symptoms that other people will say because things like bleeding, uh, you know, severe chest pain, those types of things. These are symptoms that most people don't think about, but they think they should be seeing a chiropractor for but you should not be seeing a chiropractor. You should be going to the emergency room or I'm gonna tell you what they are. So here we go. Number one, cauda equina syndrome. Now, this is not, you don't know what this is, but I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. If you have a herniated disc in your lower back and you are starting to get what's called saddle anesthesia, imagine you're riding a horse. Wherever the horse touches you in your crotch, if you are getting extremely numb or you have no feeling there, or you are losing the ability to control your bowels, in other words, you peed yourself or you pooped yourself or something like that, you are in deep, deep trouble. You need to go to the emergency room right now, and whether you like it or not, it's very possible that you need back surgery. Not back surgery that's scheduled for tomorrow or the next day, but you need back surgery now. Don't ignore this symptom. Number two, the worst headache of your life. Many times patients come in to our clinic and they have headaches and there's various types of headaches but the the telltale sign is when a patient says I've had headaches all my life but this is the worst headache I've ever had of my life and it is throbbing that is a symptom that you need to go to the emergency room for the reason why is it's possible you may need a CAT scan of your brain there is a condition where it is literally life-threatening and sometimes patients who have high pain tolerances can handle pain but they just don't know where to go so an aneurysm inside the head is no fooling around so if you are getting a headache that is the worst headache of your life that is a very bad sign and you need to go to the emergency room it could be a tumor, it could be an aneurysm. There's a lot of things, but when a patient tells me they're having the worst headache of their life, that is a red flag in my book that we're gonna analyze them the very carefully in our office to make sure there's no red flags, but very often, that's a bad sign. Number three, pulsations that you feel. The pain that you're experiencing is in a pulsating fashion, and that pulsating is happening at about 70 times per minute. What does that sound like to you? That's your heart. So if you're having neck pain and the neck pain is pulsating or you can actually feel and visually see something pulsing in your neck or your abdomen, you are in deep trouble. You need to get to the emergency room, not, to, not today, this second. Stop the video, call 911. The reason why is you might have an aneurysm. An aneurysm is where an artery starts bulging and it's ready to burst. You have minutes that you're gonna be alive after an aneurysm bursts and then you're gone. There is nothing anyone can do. You can actually be saved. And I have had, it's rare to have these, but I have had patients that have had aneurysms and it's very scary. You have to send them out of your office and get them to the emergency room right away. A quick story. Um, I had a, a friend who owned a bike shop here in town. This is, this is about 15 years ago. And his wife was um, a very health conscious person, very, very healthy. Uh, she ate extremely well. She rode 200 miles a week, you know, did yoga, all these. I mean, she basically did everything perfect. And she was doing yoga one day and she noticed that in her abdomen, her abdomen was pumping like this and she didn't know what it was so she went into an urgent care to say gee I kind of feel funny and what is this the urgent care stopped everything called 911 and got her into the hospital they saved her life she had an abdominal aneurysm that was about to burst luckily luckily she was thin enough that she actually visually saw it now, the reality is most people are not thin enough 
to see an abdominal aneurysm. It's very often caught either on an x-ray if it's calcified, it's caught on an ultrasound looking for it, or it's caught on an MRI, or it's found on autopsy. So you do not want to be a guy or a lady who has an aneurysm who doesn't know it. So if you have these symptoms, you got to stop watching this video. You got to get to the ER now. Number four, here's one for you. This comes into my office all the time. Doc, I don't feel good. What's wrong? I don't know. I'm just, I have no energy and my back hurts right back here. They'll usually use their right hand to go and point to their left middle back. They'll see, ah, don't you, can't you adjust me or maybe I need an adjustment or something like that. And I'll say, well, when did this happen? Ah, oh, it started this morning and I'm just, and I'll, sometimes you got to be observant. This is why you can't diagnose people off YouTube or uh, on the internet or over the phone. This is ridiculous. But you look at the patient and they look kind of a little flushed. They look like they're sweating a little bit or out of breath and they don't even realize it. And you say, well, where is the pain? And they point to the left side of their back. And you say, do you have any arm pain? And they go, um, no. What do you mean, no? Does it ache right there in the forearm? Does it hurt? Yeah, it kind of goes down to my little finger a little bit, but it's nothing. I just need an adjustment. No, you don't. You need to get to the ER. That's very often where we'll take their vitals right away, check their breathing, check their heart rate, check their pulse, um, check their uh, blood pressure, and just see what's going on. All the symptoms I just described are unusual but common signs of a heart attack. So we tend to think of a heart attack as crushing chest pain that may go into the left arm uh, and that type of thing. But the reality is, is that sometimes patients have weird symptoms like back pain from a non-injury. Now if a person comes in and says I have a back pain right here, I was shoveling snow yesterday and I sprained it or I was playing football with my kids, yeah that's a back injury. But when someone comes in and says I don't know what's wrong, I just kind of feel funny and if you observe the patient carefully and you ask the right questions, if you're getting those weird fatigue, uh, flushy, kind of sweating even though it's cold outside, you get a little arm pain and you have back pain, that's an unusual finding. But if you're going to a chiropractor for that, don't do it. Go to the hospital first. Make sure you're not having a heart attack. Number five, any pain that is pulsing. Now, as the pain pulses like this, if it's pulsing with every heartbeat, you need to stop seeing a chiropractor. We do not help pulsating type of problems because on average most pulsating types of problems are vascular problems. They're not neurological problems. As a chiropractor, I optimize the movement of the spinal cord so that there's no impingement of the nerves that control all the organs and muscles and, and tissues of the body. But if you're actually having a pulsating type of pain, whether it's in the neck, the abdomen, in the groin, anything like that, very often if pain is occurring with a pulsating manner, it means you're feeling it with every heartbeat, which means that's a symptom that you need to not take lightly and get it checked out immediately. Don't ignore that symptom. Number six, a fever. If you're having a fever and feel that your body's aching and think that a chiropractor can adjust that fever away, you are poorly mistaken. Now, some chiropractic methods that we use can actually boost and improve our immune system, but you have to understand what a fever is, is a fever is your body's way to try to kill viruses, bacteria, infections, fungus, all those types of things. When you're infected, your body is trying to heat up and raise the temperature to kill off whatever's in your system. You need to take that seriously and make sure that you don't muck it up by trying to do silly things like exercise it away. A fever is not a symptom that you want to ignore. When your body is fighting off infection, you need to rest it and try as best to determine what's the cause of that fever. Number seven, the last one, and this is something that I see all the time as a chiropractor, 
and people tend to ignore it because the only person that's really probably looking at the back of your ears, the back of your neck, and your actual spine is either the chiropractor or the dermatologist. If you have a mole that is starting to change and it is itching and starting to bleed and feels funny like there's wiggly, squiggly things around that area, that is a bad sign. You need to get to a dermatologist right away because skin cancer is something that doesn't really hurt until it's pretty deep into the tissue where sometimes people can perceive it. Many people, of course, look in the mirror, they look at the front of their body and they look at their face and they look at their hands because you visually can see those, but you cannot see the top of your head, the back of your neck, the back of your ears, and your actual spine. You don't have eyes behind yourself, so you can't see those. So very often when we're examining patients and we start to see little spots that look suspicious of skin cancer, and you can ask people, do you have any symptoms there? Do you feel anything? And they go, yeah, I'm always scratching there. It's always bleeding. Uh, that's a symptom you don't want to ignore. If you thought this video was interesting, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, ask in the comments section below. And please, the reason I made this video is to help you. But would you please be so kind as to share this on social media? Put this on Facebook, put this on Twitter, put it on Instagram. Send this message out because these are symptoms that are not common symptoms that really I feel people should not be ignoring. I've learned this over the years just by experience. Hopefully that helps you.